Hello and welcome to another edition of Math is Still Math. Today we're going to look back at an assessment covering X interval notation. For your algebra students, we're basically just trying to describe what part of the graph we're looking at. Uh, this very much is not a difficult, rigorous mathematical skill. It's just learning how to speak the language of algebra, geometry, all kind of rolled into one. So let's look at number one here. So it says, for what interval of x is f of x increasing? Whenever, you, whenever you're reading these letters in conjunction, when you say f of x, that's the function. That's the line we're talking about. That's the y value. That's the output. So when you read this part for what interval of x, that means what part of the x-axis am I supposed to be looking at? OK, well, here's the condition. It says that it's increasing. That means it has a positive slope. Uh, it's going up, basically. So, what part of the graph is it going up? It looks like it's going up right there, yeah? And then we always look at the graph going left to right, so that is the only part of the graph that is increasing. But the question is asking how, like, for you to tell the reader what part of it is increasing. So we've got to give them somewhere to look. So we are going to use the x-axis to tell them where to look. Well, if your x value is anywhere in here, all these x values are part of this line, part of this segment right here. Until we get to where? Until we get to right here, it stops going up. So basically, all here and forever back, these are the x values that tell us where to look, where the line is increasing. So here's how we communicate that. f of x is increasing for when x is less than or equal to zero. So as long as x is zero or smaller, as long as x is smaller or zero, then that's where our f of x is increasing. So that's how to interpret number one. Let's, check, let's take a look at number two. So here's number two. For what interval of x, so where on the x-axis would I be looking where f of x is constant? So here's our condition, constant. Well, that means a slope is zero or it's going to be flat, just going sideways. Well, I think we can all see it's right here. It's right in there. There's that flat constant part. Now let's look. The x values are here. To here so that's the region right here this is the region of the x-axis where our function our y values are constant so how do we communicate that well it's all the x's in between negative 1 and negative 4 so here's what you do you put x in the middle you put negative four on this side. You put negative one on this side. Now you need to make sure your arrows are pointing the correct way, your inequality symbols are pointing the right way. So we wanna make sure that x is bigger than negative four, and we wanna make sure that it's less than negative one. So if you were to cover up half of it, so this means that x is bigger than negative four because it opens to the larger value, and it's also saying that x is less than negative one. So this is, this is the part of the x-axis I'd want to look at. So as long as x is in between negative 4, meaning it's bigger than negative 4, and it's less than negative 1, that's the section of our function that we, where the slope is constant. Let's take a look at number 3. Okay, so here's number 3. For what interval of x, where in the x-axis am I supposed to look, 
And the, uh, the condition is, does f of x have a negative slope? Okay, so when it says negative slope, that means it's going down. It's decreasing. Um, and since we always read left to right, that means it's going down right in here. Right in there. Uh, which means that as long as... So how do we describe... Oh, you know what? I should I should say this. You are to assume that this line goes on forever, by the way. And this line will go on forever. We just ran out of room. We don't have enough paper to have these lines go on forever, but they do go on forever. Unless you see a big dot, like where the line segment ends, it's going to go on forever. If the line disappears out of the edge of the graph, it goes on forever. It's like the fifth time I've said it, but it's true. If the line goes out of the edge, you are to assume it just goes on forever in that direction. So, what part of this graph shows a negative slope? Where is it going down? Where is it decreasing? Well, as long as the x values... It starts going up at zero, so as long as the x values are less than or equal to zero, the line has a negative slope. These are all the x values right here. Do you hear all your x values? And this is where it's decreasing. So that's the part of the graph I'm being told to look at. Where is the line decreasing? I don't like having that arrow up here anymore. It's coming down. We always go left to right. Let's move on to number four. For what interval of x is f of x positive? Okay, so now, this is a keyword. Positive has nothing to do with slope. Positive just means it's above the x-axis. That means we have positive y values. Because f of x, you can, you can interpret that as, as the function. It's your y, it's your outputs. So where are our outputs positive? Where do they have positive values? Well, I've got two sections here. They're positive here, and they're positive over here. They are above the x-axis. The y values are positive for all of these locations. So I'm still asking you to speak in terms of x. So what part of the x-axis what part of our x values are we talking about? So we're talking about out here and out here. And remember, like I said, number three, these lines go on forever. So where are our y values positive? For what interval of x is f of x positive? There are two answers. You need them both and they're not conjoined. So you're gonna say, x has to be less than, three, that's negative four, or x has to be greater than, that looks like it crosses the line at five. So that's how you say it with the word or, it's, we don't do the conjoined, you know, they're separated here, so f of x is positive for x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 5. Let's go on to number 5. For what interval of x does f of x have a slope of 0? Okay, slope of 0, that's constant. That's a flat line. Okay, so where is the line flat? Where is it constant? Oh, I see it. Right there. And again, this line goes forever this way. We just don't have enough graph space to show it. So how do we describe that in terms of x? Like what part of the x-axis are we talking about here? Well, it looks like from negative one backwards, because once you get to negative 1 on the x-axis, that's when the slope is no longer constant. So how do, we, how do we communicate that? Well, f of x has a slope of 0 
as long as x is less than negative 1. As long as x is less than or equal to negative 1, we've got a slope of 0. Okay, let's take a look at number 6. So number six, for what interval of x does f of x have a positive slope? Okay, so there's our conditions. A positive slope means it's going up, it is increasing. What section of this graph is it increasing? Oh, there are two sections of this graph where it is, has a positive slope. It has a positive slope here and a positive slope right there. So our answer is gonna be two parts, but because they're separated, it's gonna have the or answer. It's gonna be or here or here. So, uh, we, now again, we have to speak in terms of x. So our x values for it's increasing are here. And again, this line goes on forever this way. And then starting here, going this way. So, okay, so this is negative six, negative five, four, three. It looks like negative three and back. So that'd be as long as x is less than or equal to negative three or it looks like it starts going up right there, which is at one, or as long or x is greater than or equal to one. Yeah, that's it. So as long as x is less than or equal to negative three, or if it's greater than or equal to one, that's where the positive slopes are. Let's move on to number seven. Okay, so for what intervals of x is f of x decreasing? Okay, so here's the condition. It's gotta be going down. It has to have a negative slope. And, oh, I see it. So starting up here at this spot, it goes down forever. This line keeps going. So we have to speak in terms of x. That's how our answer is gonna be communicated. So the x values start da, 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 right there. And as long as the x values are bigger than that, that's the section of the graph where it's all going down. So, as long as x is greater than, as long as it's bigger or equal to negative three, the slope is negative. It is decreasing. Yeah, that's how I tell the reader where to look. As long as x is bigger than or equal to negative three, you're gonna see a decreasing line, a negative slope. Let's move on to number eight. Well, here are our last problem. For what interval of x is f of x negative? Again, this has nothing to do with slope. Negative means below the x-axis. It means that our y values are negative. Where on this graph are the y values negative? So y va negative y values are down here, right? That means that this part of the graph and this part of the graph all have negative y values. f of x is negative in these two sections. Now they're separated, so we're gonna have an or in this answer, but we have to speak in terms of x. So on the x-axis between here and here, we've got negative y values, and, and from here on, we have negative y values. You can almost try to look at like this section of the graph We have negative y values for these regions of the x-axis, okay? So between here, which it looks like that's negative five, that's negative four and negative one. So as long as, oh, now this is a conjoined section. So this answer is gonna be as long as x is, it's in between negative four and eight. So negative four is on this side, negative one is on this side. So as long as x is in between negative four and negative five, which means x is bigger than negative four, 
and less than negative one. You have to make sure your inequalities, please make sure your inequalities are pointing in the correct direction. So the x values that are, the x values that are bigger than negative four and are less than negative one. So right in here, so they're bigger than negative four, but they're less than negative one. Excuse me. Or if the x value is bigger than, is that a two? That's two. Or if x is bigger than two, that is also where our y values are negative. That was, that was a nice one. I like how it had a conjoined and answer, and then the disconnected or part of that answer as well. So these are the two regions of our x-axis where we have negative y values. I hope this video has been helpful and instructive on how to use x-interval notation to tell your reader what part of the graph to look at. You got to be careful about using the word and in these conjoined answers or the word or because your answer has been separated. You also have to remember that these lines, once they leave the graph, they go on forever, or we're supposed to assume they do. They don't just end unless we give them an endpoint, like a, like a coordinate with a big dot on it. Also, you gotta try not to mix up when I say a negative slope and f of x is negative. Those are two different things. Negative slope means the line is going down in a decreasing motion. Negative just means if it's below the x-axis, it's gonna be negative. If, the uh, vice versa for positive and increasing slope. I'm Mr. Matthews, and this has been another edition of Math is Still Math.